Welcome and thank you for joining our worship service once again today. Many blessings to you and your home from our congregation, the Dutch Reformed Church, Welterfreden Park, here in Johannesburg, South Africa. We are experiencing the season of spring and all around us there are signs of new life in nature and therefore I trust that the Lord will also nourish our souls and bless us with new life and energy through this service. I would like to start our service by reading us a few verses from Psalm 100, where it says in the Amplified Bible Translation, Enter his gates with a song of thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. Bless and praise his name. All of us, despite challenges and hardship, has something to be thankful for and we acknowledge that all our blessings are gracious gifts from God. And therefore, dear friends, it's my privilege to greet you in the wonderful name of God Almighty, our provider and sustainer, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us start this worship service by singing a song of praise and by glorifying the name of the Lord. Feel free to sing along. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. Every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you 
have done great things. God, you do great things. Oh, God, you do great things. Let us pray. Father, we bow before you and acknowledge you as the King above all kings. You are holy and worthy to be praised. Bless us when we open your word today. Reveal your will to us and give us the will and the courage to do what you ask of us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now friends, today's scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 17 and we will be reflecting on verse 5 to 10. And our theme for today is Lazy Disciple Syndrome. Let us read together. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink, and after that you may eat and drink? Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Now that concludes our reading. May the Lord bless his word today in our minds and our hearts. Friends, what comes to mind when you hear the word responsibility? I think we all agree that being responsible is an important feature of adult life. Responsible people are those people who take responsibility for their actions, for their choices, for their lives and the way they engage with the world. Being responsible further means that it is wrong to simply expect everyone else to do everything for us. In a sense, we could say that part of being responsible is also to graduate from childhood to adulthood. We learn and we grow and then we take our place within our families and our communities as contributors, taking responsibility for our jobs, our deeds and our lives. So in essence, we get the concept of being responsible, except for when we are talking about our relationship with Jesus. For some reason, some believers, when they think about Jesus, imagine that upon baptism and confirmation and the occasional communion, that their part of the agreement or the relationship is done. That their role is to sit back and to receive the Lord's gift of grace and then allow Jesus to do everything for them. To fix their lives. To keep them from harm to prevent and heal their illnesses, to multiply their good fortune, to comfort them and to sustain them. It is almost as if they see themselves as receivers and Jesus as the giver. And as Christians, we believe that justification by faith means we don't have to do anything except trust in him in order to receive his gift of salvation. But it is almost as if some Christians take this a step too far and therefore say, we just don't need to do anything at all, ever again. Good deeds, or as we used to call them, acts of mercy, are after all Jesus' department, right? He is the, the miracle worker, and we are not. Except the acts of the apostles would tell us differently, and so would Jesus. Now, in our scripture passage for today, Jesus is pushing back at his disciples pretty firmly, not because they've done anything wrong, 
but because they are willing to sit back and allow him to take full responsibility for their actions and even their faith. He is responding to a problem that is prevalent still today, passivity of purpose, or in perhaps more accurate words, LDS, Lazy Disciple Syndrome. The disciples have gotten too comfortable being students of Jesus. They are no doubt enjoying the status of being part of Jesus' inner circle. They get a lot of attention. They love the revolutionary vibe. And they can't wait to see what he's going to do next. They get a kick out of his antics with the Pharisees. They are amazed by his ability to teach and to heal. And they love it so much that they don't want it to end. They are almost like college students who never want to graduate because they are having too much fun. But when Jesus starts to nudge at them to begin taking an active part in the mission, they suddenly feel unprepared. Like all passages of scripture, this one can't be read in a vacuum. Because just before this conversation, Jesus had instructed the disciples that they must be responsible so as to never cause anyone else to stumble. Not only, but they must forgive no matter how many times anyone sins against them. Jesus said to the disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a milestone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. At this Jesus' disciples began to feel overwhelmed. They felt like a huge responsibility to act in a way so that no one stumbles in their faith, to forgive any time someone sins against them. How can they manage this? And what were their response? They said, Lord, increase our faith. And at this, Jesus becomes a bit stern and informs them that if they have even the slightest bit of faith, they can move mountains. But move is an important concept here. They need to take responsibility for their own faith and the mission all on their own. You see, Jesus knows that he will not always be with them. He knows it is time to start moving the disciples from being students to those being engaged in mission with him. And if they remain passive, the mission will die along with him. So he firmly states their purpose. Their jobs as disciples is to serve God's people in the world, to serve as examples of true faith and to carry out God's mission in the world. They aren't to expect free passes because discipleship is real and an active responsibility that they will need to carry out. Now, one of my favorite stories when I was a young boy was the story of the little red hen. Perhaps you also read this timeless tale. This story is about a hen which asks a duck and a cat and a dog for help in planting and cutting and threshing and milling the wheat and finally baking the bread for the daily suppers. But no one wants any part of this responsibility. After each of the hen's requests results in decline, she answers, well, then I will do it myself. And after the bread is finished and is ready for the table, every one of the animals speak up that they are eager to help her eat the bread. But the little red hen decides to eat it all by herself. Now the moral, of course, to the story is that those who do not take part in the responsibilities will not take part in the reward. While Jesus is not saying that his salvation is dependent on works, he is saying that our commitment to follow him, to be his disciples, does come with responsibilities. 
In fact, our covenant of faith with God comes with responsibilities and has from the beginning of time. We know a covenant is an agreement between two or more parties. God's covenant assures us that God will always be our God. He will protect us. He will love us and care for us always. And as part of the covenant, God sent himself in the human form of Jesus to absolve us, to redeem us and save us from ourselves. But this covenant has another side. Our responsibility in this covenant is to love God first and our neighbor second. And to follow Jesus as his disciples and to carry out God's mission in the world. To bear the fruit of God's covenant to all generations. Yes, we are justified in faith, but this does not free us of our discipleship responsibilities. In fact, it solidifies them. And when we commit to God in baptism and confirmation and each time we receive Holy Communion, we recommit our lives to discipleship with Jesus. We aren't meant to be mere passive receivers, but we confirm our responsibility to be active missioners. And often we look at the work we are, do, are to do in the world, even the huge energy that it takes to love the people who harm us and to take care for the people who disagree with us. And it seems too much for us to handle. And yet, this is part of what Jesus asks us to do. Yes, Jesus will be there for us. Yes, he will help us and he will assure us of, our, of his strength. He will guide us in the power of the Holy Spirit. But we are not without responsibility. Our responsibility is what makes us worthy disciples or simply advocates of LDS. We all look forward someday to the time when we will enter into God's heavenly kingdom and sit at his endless feast. But we take on the responsibilities of discipleship, not to gain a reward, but because it is our job. It is our calling. It is who we are called to be by our Master and our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for blessing us with your holy presence today. And thank you for revealing your heart through your word. We pray that you will guide us and strengthen us to partner with you to become messengers of hope. Help us to not just sit back and wait to be served, but to give our time, our effort and support where it is needed. Help us to model your example of true servanthood and to equip us in building your kingdom in everything we say and do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, with the abundance of new life that we experience through springtime, we can see how the Lord sustains nature and brings forth new growth. When we look back at our own lives during the past year, we too can, can do it with a sense of gratitude and humility. Because despite all the challenges and hardship we might have faced, the Lord still provided abundantly. And if you are in a position to give thanks to the Lord and would like to support our efforts and bring hope and joy in our community and the lives of the vulnerable, you are more than welcome to make a contribution to our ministry by following the instructions that will follow on the screen. Friends, thank you for watching and listening to our service today. As always, it was a privilege to spend some time with you. May you and your home be blessed and may you experience the protection and the provision of the Lord. Let us receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.